vast open worlds, freedom, agency, the horizon, and also a lot of bugs and weird stuff. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 dumb things that only happen in open world games. Starting off at number 10, it's all the weird bugs. We're just jumping right into this. So open world games are often very big and complex. They have tons of systems going at the same time, trying to simulate a large scale world for you. Because of that, they have a tendency to be a little buggier than other games, at least when they're first released. Certain kind of bugs are, are basically exclusive to open world games even, and they tend to have some of the funniest and weirdest ones out there. And a big reason for that is the nature of the game. Stuff like horses and vehicles falling out of the sky, that's pretty common in open world games, although sometimes they can be difficult to notice. While other things like visually messed up NPCs can stand out a lot more. Honestly, we could dedicate this entire section to the various bugs everybody's seen in Cyberpunk 2077, but it's so far from the only open world game with bugs. Remember the no faces from Assassin's Creed Unity? Or the mutant children from Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Look at their worst, open world games can be some of the most unstable and buggy games out there. It can be annoying, but if you're lucky, it can also be really funny. At number nine, in some games, it's actually harder not to kill NPCs. Like we're looking at you, Grand Theft Auto, and you know exactly what we're talking about. Even in games where you're supposed to be a, a decent guy, like in San Andreas and GTA 4, it's almost impossible to go through the game without getting into a little vehicular manslaughter. It's honestly pretty bad if you think about it. You play as a dude who's totally okay with just driving into a busy sidewalk just because it'll get them through traffic a little quicker. In the real world, that would make you a monster, but the story keeps going on like you're pretty much an okay dude. We all know why that is. These open world games have a story they want to tell and they're not going to change things just because the player wants to go through on a cathartic rampage once in a while. But it can lead to some dissonant moments for sure. GTA is hardly the only one that does this. A lot of open world games let you mow down civilians by the hundreds, even when you're supposed to be the good guy. Some of them give you some kind of penalty, but a lot of them just let it happen. Maybe if they made NPCs have like a little bit of a survival instinct, it wouldn't be so incredibly easy to kill them. But with the way that a lot of games are, they don't do that. The fact that it's harder to avoid killing innocent people in a lot of open world games is just plain dumb. And number eight, in the Grand Theft Auto series, the world is just surrounded by an endless ocean. I mean, a weird thing about a lot of open world games is that there's literally nothing outside the bounds of the world that you live in. Even though in games like Grand Theft Auto V are supposed to take place in an alternative version of California, it's actually an island in the middle of an empty sea. It's not even close to any other land. There is no hint of a wider world out there. You get on a plane, you just start flying, and you see an infinite sea of nothingness forever. Now, this isn't really the case for a lot of open world games. Red Dead Redemption has the world continue, but it hits you with an invisible wall. But for whatever reason, Grand Theft Auto just makes every city or state into an island. They let you leave the main part of the map, but there's nothing else there. It's honestly kind of creepy when you keep going. It's kind of like breaking the boundaries of the map, but the game just lets you do whatever you want. This one's pretty much confined to the GTA games, but they are also the biggest open world games of all time. There are a few other ones with open ocean all around the game world, like Just Cause, but they're intentionally set on little island nations, so it doesn't really seem quite as strange. Honestly, this is actually kind of a cool thing. It's only dumb when you get to start thinking about it too much. It's kind of cool that the developers give you free roam on the map, even though it doesn't make sense. And number seven is the Klepto Hero. Yeah, pretty much just a thing in any game where you collect items, but it's especially bad in open world games. We all do it too, and it never makes any sense. You just walk into anybody's house, steal everything that's not nailed down, and then happily agree with them with whatever quests they want to give you. It's just like no mention at all is made of the blatant thievery. They just give you your task and that's that. Or in some cases, they're just some person and they're like, hi, how are you today? And you're like, I just stole your stuff. Aha. It's really noticeable in games like Witcher 3, where you can take like a ton of stuff from people's houses without it being considered stealing at all. It's mostly junk, but who knows, you might need it or be able to sell it. It's especially funny in games like Skyrim, where the open nature of the game just lets you pull off all these really silly tricks, like the old pot on head trick. 
you just block an NPC's view and you just take whatever you want, no problem. You'd think if you tried this in real life, the person would, I don't know, take the pot off their head, but they'll just stand there forever with a thing on their head while you happily rob them blind. It's not exactly the most heroic thing to do, but the game doesn't stop you and no one seems to care. So, hey, why not? At number six, you clear out a base only for it to fill right back up again. You see this in Assassin's Creed games, some Far Cry games. The worst is in two. Um, okay, it's less dumb in a funny way and more dumb in an annoying way. You spend time slowly and carefully clearing out an enemy base. Then you leave and come back, maybe to collect something you might have missed, only to find that the place is completely repopulated, like immediately. The most infamous example of this has to be Far Cry 2, which dotted the map with checkpoints that you were basically forced to pass multiple times if you wanted to get anywhere at all. And these checkpoints would constantly be getting fresh new soldiers to give you problems. It's like, I cleared this place out already. Where did these guys come from? It's especially annoying when this happens in what feels like no time at all. Like these bases would get refilled fast sometimes and in a way that made it very annoying to deal with. Far Cry 2 is hardly the only game that does this though. Uh, Assassin's Creed, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Watch Dogs Legion, basically any Ubisoft game does it, even if it's not quite as annoying to deal with. In general though, it just kind of sucks to know that carefully dismantling a, an enemy base is basically pointless because they'll just have it again in an hour. Not every open world game does this, and it's not always bad when they do, but it can be disappointing. And number five is hunting down pointless collectibles. Yeah, so open world game heroes don't care about killing innocent people. They'll rob people they're trying to help blind, and they've got the attention span of a hummingbird. With the sometimes hundreds of collectibles to be found in an open world game, it's easy to imagine your character as someone who is distracted by pretty much everything. How, remember how one of the collectibles in Assassin's Creed 2 were feathers? Like Ezio's just gonna stop all of his very important, time-consuming, mass, huge quest for revenge against the Templars uh, to chase some feathers around. Yeah, oh yeah, cool, fine normal even. It's just really goofy when you think about it. Imagining Batman actually taking the time to collect Riddler trophies. Sure, there is an actual reason for him to get them in game. They help him catch the Riddler in a lot of instances, but it's still just pretty funny imagining Batman flailing around trying to solve a physics puzzle or whatever in an open world. Like in the middle of a hostage situation. There are other games with equally pointless stuff. Remember the Playboy magazines in Mafia 2? Or hell, the hundreds and hundreds of Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild? Yeah, that whole Ganon thing that destroyed Hyrule that one time. It might be coming back, but no, we need to go around and find 900 Korok seeds for, you know, what amounts to basically a pointless reward. In any real world sense, collecting these things just totally nonsense. It can be fun and relaxing to do if you're into it, but it really just doesn't make sense. And number four, escaping wanted levels. Uh, you know what we're talking about here. You wanted at level five, the police have pulled out all the stops to get you, they shoot on sight, helicopters, armed cars, government pulls up in tanks, man. No holds barred, these people want your end. Then you get out of the red circle and hide for a few seconds and everybody just gives up. They all go home and like eat dinner, I guess. Doesn't matter how terrible your crimes were as long as you're outside that circle and wait a while, you get off totally scot-free. Hell, even if you do get caught or killed, they still just basically let you go with a little swat on the wrist. Pay some hospital fees, have your weapons confiscated, and you're good to go. It's not just GTA games that do this sort of thing either. It's basically every kind of open world game with like a wanted system in it. Like Red Faction Guerrilla, if you drive into the rebel base and the EDF loses track of you, that's it. Like you'd think bringing the bad guys directly to your secret base would be a bad thing, but no, you just drive up this hill and they're like, huh, well, he went up in the hills, so I guess we have to stop. I don't want to go up in the hills. The thing is, though, that if these manhunts were more realistic, it would basically sap all the fun out of the game. It's fun to go on a rampage once in a while in GTA, but you don't want to ruin your game forever by making it so the police are going to try to kill you on sight while you're driving around for the rest of all time. It's one of those things we all kind of have to just accept, because otherwise the game wouldn't really be that fun. And number three is teleporting cops. 
The exact opposite of the previous dumb thing. Yeah, it can be dumb when cops give up hunting you, but it's just as dumb when they immediately find you. We're talking about games where you go out into an open field in the middle of nowhere and firing a gun will cause someone to teleport behind you and start firing. Games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 can be kind of bad about this, but the most recent was of course Cyberpunk 2077, which barely even tried to disguise how it would simply just teleport police to your location when you commit a crime. And who could forget the stop citizen nonsense from Skyrim, where guards would just materialize through doors when you got caught trying to steal? Both of these things are goofy, but while making escaping from trouble easier usually makes open world games more fun, this example is more often than not just really annoying. It's like, just give us a bit of a head start, all right? At number two, when time just stops for you. Basically, every open world game encourages exploration, but many of their stories have a time limit or some kind of ticking clock element. It's possible to waste hundreds of hours goofing off when the story says that you need to do something right now and it doesn't matter. This is basically in every single open world game ever, but it's particularly noticeable in games like Marvel Spider-Man, where Spidey is seemingly always in a rush to deal with whatever new catastrophe is hitting New York, so it really stands out when he decides to take pictures of random spots in New York or collect backpacks. Far Cry 5 tried to change things up a little bit by making it so story missions would interrupt your progress and force you to play through them after you've done enough in your area, but most people thought it was really annoying. So at the end of the day, this is one of those acceptable breaks from reality that exist to make games maybe a little less frustrating. Like imagine a game where you're constantly in a time limit, it'd be really stressful, right? All right, so Dead Rising does that, but that's a gimmick. I don't know that I would want every game to be like that. So this is kind of by design, sometimes annoying, sometimes liberating. I don't know. Finally, at number one is when the hero has to do everything. Many open world games start off with basically nothing and force you to do everything. Collect stuff, fill out the map, hunt for food, craft your guns, get collectibles, just everything. It's especially dumb when the game takes place in a somewhat modern setting, like why do Assassin's Creed characters need to uncover a map of London? You'd think they would know the general layout of London. Or like in Far Cry games where you need to hunt animals to make upgrades for your equipment. Uh, like, why do I need to kill a bunch of critters to make my wallet bigger? Or like in Fallout 4, where you're basically single-handedly responsible for defending every settlement in Commonwealth pretty much by yourself. You need to staff them, equip them with weapons when need be, and you need to defend them from raiders and super mutants. Basically, the Minutemen are supposed to be an entire faction dedicated to defending people, but all they really do is just call you up whenever there's any trouble. Even in games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you basically have to build up a settlement at Ravensthorpe. Really, the only reason you need anyone else there to help you raid and collect loot is because you can't open certain doors and chests by yourself. Otherwise, it is all you. Obviously, this is an issue in pretty much any video game. The games. It would be strange if you, the player, didn't have a hand in making things happen and moving this story forward, but some games go way overboard with it, and it'd be believable if some other characters had some effect on things. That is all for today. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.